Seek the Lord. Father of God, this morning, oh God, we are risen in the Lord God, and we are seeking your face. You've given us the privilege, oh God, to come here, oh God. Father of God, we are praying, Lord Jesus, that your spirit will come in his own special way. You will come in your own special way, oh God. And you have your way in our lives. Father of God, we pray, oh God, for wisdom. We pray for deep understanding. Deep mystery being resolved in the name of Jesus. Yes. Father of God, oh, we can do better job, oh God. Yes. Father of God, so that at the end of God, you will say, well done, my yes. servants. Well done, because we run the race and we finish well. Because we were able to be equipped. Father, we thank you, oh God, for the impartation. We thank you, oh God, for your word that will be coming forth. We thank you, oh God, for the praise and worship. We thank you, oh God, that you are going to receive it, oh God. Yeah. We exalt you. We magnify you. Yeah.
shall manifest himself greatly in this place in this day. Each one of us personally, hallelujah. We thank the Lord. Thank you, Lord. So if you would repeat after me. Father God.
that we could not obtain and could not know and could not receive on our own. Say that, Pastor. Then I'll draw out of you. He said, Come and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is a lot. Try to pronounce those Greek words. 
It says, but the Spirit itself making in us this for us with groaning that cannot be uttered. Verse 27, he that searches the heart knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he makes in us for the sake of going to the will of God. But we know that all things work together for the good to them that love, that love, love God to them who are called, the call according to his purpose. But whom he did for no he did also predestined to be conformed. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. And then he's trying to tell you what he wants you to be transformed into. To be conformed into the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn of men among many brethren. 1 John 3 says, Behold, what manner. Go turn that in. You got your Bibles on your iPad or your telephone. Or, you know, we can go to the, the scripture. Behold, behold, behold. I'm emphasizing behold because he's trying to establish what you are to hold on to. Behold, what manner of love. This is love 26. This is God love for you. The Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knows us not because it knew him not. You're trying to convince a world uh, that, that don't listen. You don't have to convince them when you prove it in yourself. When you when you are convinced, then you be convincing. But when you still trying to figure it out, it's not a place to try to get somebody else to know what you're still trying to know yourself. One of the one of the greatest thing that you can identify a weak leader is the insecurity in themselves. That's the biggest element of a weak leader. When you are insecure, a weak leader will hold back information, will hold back stuff just to make themselves seem, seem superior because they don't want to share to make anybody else more. But when you're convinced that sharing didn't take away from who you are. You would have in a minute, maybe. Okay? He said, Behold. Now he's told us about the love that the Father had to bestow. Now he's established. Now he says, Beloved. That's right. Now we are. Now are we. Now are we. He said, Now are we. Before he said the Father is going to bestow this, now he said he's already done. Yes. Now, beloved, establish this. Now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for he shall, but we shall see him as he is. And we're not talking about, we're not talking about in the sweet Bible. How many know that he is presently, daily, constantly, based on our stimulating of that relationship, revealing himself to us? Yes, sir. And as he revealed himself to us, that is the nature we are to gravitate and embrace as ours. It's amazing how We've been saved so long and we still mean as hell. No. 
clear when it comes to Luke. Because and, and one of my, my members has said, Pastor, I'm thankful that you changed that because now I can receive it and understand it better. The first three is in you. That's, 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 that's a given. The first three is in you. That's the sustaining portion of God that you can't let go because, listen, every fruit produces the next fruit. Every fruit comes from, again, the kingdom of God is as a man sow a seed. That means that the process of a seed is it starts off and each level produces the next level that produces the next level that ultimately produces the fruits of what that seed is. So that means that each level of this fruit of the spirit produces the next level, the next degree. So again, the first three is in me, love, joy, and peace.
he was kind of concluding uh, to the end of his life. Matter of fact, in 2 Timothy, Josephus, a uh, scholar would have it that when Paul wrote 2 Timothy and gave this letter to Timothy, he was three weeks from his death. Within three weeks, he was dead. They put him, they beheaded him. So, this right here that I'm about to teach you is the last, is the last words of a spiritual father to his son. And he talks a lot about leadership here. And uh, I want to look here and I want to read from, amen, uh, the NIV. And, it, and I'm going to read the first two verses in 2 Timothy, uh, the second chapter, verses 1 and 2. It says, you then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witness entrust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. Now, first of all, I believe that a leader, a leader impact or should be impacting two generations beyond themselves. Corinthians, the 12th chapter, the 12th chapter, and starting at verse number 7, he says, unless I should be exalted above measures, unless I should be exalted above measures through the abundance of revelation. Paul said, look at here, I've got a revelation out of this world. And if I'm not careful, I'm going to be exalted. Because watch this, when you know what you know, you tend to let what you know cause you to exalt yourself above where you ought to be. Remember he said there are two, there are three perspectives. There is thinking too highly of yourself. Uh -huh. There's thinking too lowly of yourself. Uh -huh. And then there's solely thinking. A man ought to think solely. And Paul says, listen what he says here, because I'm going to show you this and you'll see it in scripture. He says, uh, I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelation. What is he saying? He said he had a lot of revelation because Paul began to talk about a man that he knew once above over 14 years ago. He says, in body and spirit, I cannot tell. Who was that man? Himself. Himself. In other words, Paul had gotten caught up into things of God that he began to access a revelation that was beyond measures. And when he got caught up, and he began to experience that, it really did something to him. And he says, uh, uh, I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelation. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh. Now notice, some people like this.
our church, with other churches. And because our church don't have certain type of conferences, event, now we say, well, our church need to have more of that. When you got to realize God ain't giving your church that. <laughs> you don't pay attention to what you've been hearing. 